Living around Seattle, being surrounded by water, I've been wanting to do a electric kayak build for a long time now. And uh, I've also wanted to get some experience with machine learning, especially on the edge. And so um, I figured I would combine the two things. And this is phase one of my AI powered electric kayak build. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the propulsion system, the battery, the motor and everything, and my future plans. Flipsy, Flipsky, Flipsky, however you say it. It's 160 kilovolts, uh, 500 watt motor, and it costs about $90. But these brushless DC or uh, VLDC motors, they're perfect for this type of application. Um, just because of how small they can be, still pack in a lot of thrust. This particular motor it has about five kilograms of thrust, which is 11 pounds. So doing some research on trolling motors, it was recommended every 100 pounds of cargo should be about two pounds of thrust. So I really, I wanted the kayak to be able to hold two people or like 400 pounds roughly. So that's about eight pounds of thrust that I would need for the motor. Um, so my 11 pound of thrust should be plenty, uh, plenty more than I need. The disadvantage of these BLDC motors is the more complex motor control that's involved. So you do have to have a specialized motor controller, but you have to activate the three phases of the motor in particular order in order to pull the rotor through its different magnetic phases. So these can get a little bit expensive um, and complex, but it's worth the trade-off for this application. first one was stolen from my mail room. So all in all, I'm in on the batteries for like $500. It is from Aegis. Luckily they gave me a half off discount on my second battery. Um, otherwise it would have cost me like three, 350. The battery chemistry on this is lithium iron phosphate. Uh, so it's one of the safer battery chemistries for lithium ion. It's less prone to have thermal runaways and is a little more stable. This thing is a beast though. It is 480 watt hours, uh, 24 volts, 20 amp hours. So it could power your iPhone for about six months. Um, also, the battery weight is critical for this application. Um, it's pretty heavy, weighing like 10 pounds, so it's a little bit on the heavy side for what I wanted, but it has been fine so far. If you're enjoying this video, you want to stay updated on my progress, uh, there's lots of different ways you can support me. First off, you can like and subscribe. Second, uh, check out my Tindy store. And lastly, check out my personal blog. I'll have a lot more technical details on the blog of the build process, and I post a lot of educational content there. So this is a uh, DIY anti-spark circuit that I made. Uh, you can buy these on Flipski for like 40 or 80 bucks, but I was trying to save as much money as possible after the whole battery fiasco. So uh, it cost me like seven bucks and a couple hours of time. But basically you need these anti-spark circuits um, because the speed controllers, or the, the VESC controller that I'm using, has these large capacitors um, basically handle current surges to the motors. And if you plug in power straight to it, it's gonna cause a rapid change in voltage, which will just hammer these capacitors with a bunch of current to charge them up and you'll get this big spark on your connector. So you need these kind of soft start circuits in order to make sure that doesn't happen. 
The circuit could be enabled by the override switch or a microcontroller driving the BJT. Once enabled, the first relay allows current to the rest of the circuit, and the capacitors on the VESC motor controller will act like a short circuit for a fraction of a second, but the amount of current flowing into the capacitors is limited by R1. After the caps charge up, they start to act like an open circuit. This lets current flow from the caps into the second relay coil, and once the second relay enables, full battery current is allowed to the motor controller. This way, the motor controller caps are allowed to recharge for a fraction of a second before receiving the full battery current, and that avoids any sparking. I modeled the fin in Fusion 360. I went through a few different iterations because I kept forgetting to leave space for the actual propellers, but by the third revision, I finally got everything right. At this point, I was ready to start testing. The VESC has a built-in PID controller that helps reach a commanded RPM smoothly. I wanted to tune it before going out on the water since I know how finicky PID controllers can be. I didn't want to run the motor at high speeds in air in case of burning out any waterproofing seals, and I wanted to tune the PID controller under load, so I filled up the bathtub and threw everything in. But it was a bit too shallow and the prop started sucking in air above like a thousand RPMs. So I tuned at these speeds the best I could. I tried to get rid of any current spikes on the startup and tried to get the RPMs critically damped. I found a deeper tub, but I could still only run up to like 1600 RPMs without making a giant mess. So I just had to tune it the best I could and I'll have to finish it when I get on the water. Just phase one of the project, but I'm setting out to build the e-bike of kayaks using AI. So in the long run, the kayak will detect when the user starts paddling and automatically assist them with the electric motor. I plan on training a machine learning model that will be able to detect if the user is paddling straight or turning left or right. And that's going to be based on an IMU sensor that lives on the oar. An IMU or inertial measurement unit is just a sensor that can detect acceleration, rotation, and magnetic field in the X, Y, and Z direction. So based off of all those inputs, it can detect its position and its movement in space. I've got lots of work left to do on this thing, but for now I am ready to hit the water. So in the next video, I'm gonna take it out to the lake, finish up my PID tuning, and see how far it can take me.